help us to understand what you are teaching us lord jesus let your word pierce our hearts and minds and even to the joint and marrow lord jesus and we ask this in the most precious name of jesus amen 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 thank you thank you john for uh, leading in that prayer so yesterday we were talking about the different kinds of prayer uh, we touched upon a few and we had uh, some remaining so we will talk about it today uh, and then move on to the next chapter i'm on page 19 i talked about uh, the prayer of unburdening where we could you know go into god's presence and just uh, open up our hearts uh, and uh, you know trust god to uh, give us his peace in exchange for uh, all that we bring to him so the next prayer here is the prayer of faith okay for healing now we see uh, in the book of james james chapter 5 verses 14 through 16 now it encourages us to uh, like uh, uh, many of you would have uh, read that passage it says if there's anyone sick among you then you uh, ask the elders to come and pray for them anointing with oil and then you know that that uh, scripture there verse 15 of chapter 5 james it says the prayer of faith will save the sick so praying a prayer of faith okay uh, is what releases god's healing on somebody's uh, life it could release healing on somebody's body you see an example of this uh, in the case of paul as well now when paul was stranded uh, on the island of uh, malta there was the local leader over there who was sick okay uh, and uh, paul prays for this person who had a fever paul went into him and prayed it says and he laid laid hands on him and healed him so what kind of prayer is required to see the sick people healed a prayer of faith okay a prayer of faith so we uh, use this when we are ministering healing to people so you pray based on and where does our faith come from our faith comes from uh, the word of god so we meditate on god's word we learn from god's word uh, on the work of the cross and what has been made available to us and when we know what is available to us through the covenant you know we are able to pray this prayer of faith over the sick people and the sick are healed okay so the prayer of faith for the healing of the sick now prayer of waiting this could be a prayer where you know you you uh, continue to tarry on in the presence of the lord okay so we might uh, choose to take some time and just be in god's presence now uh, in these moments of waiting if we pray other kinds of prayers maybe a prayer of thanksgiving uh, you know a prayer of petition a prayer of supplication uh, that's all right but in general what we're doing is we're just spending time with the lord you know some people um, like to call it soaking okay i don't know if you have come across that term but just being in god's presence and waiting upon the lord Okay. Now, once again, just being in God's presence and letting that touch you, uh, inquiring in the temple, as uh, Paul puts it in Psalm twenty-seven, just gazing upon the beauty of the Lord. You know what happens to us? You know we get ministered to, right? Uh, and we are allowing uh, uh, God to work in our lives when we engage in the prayer of waiting. Isaiah forty is another beautiful passage where we are told, you know, they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. So, what is this waiting? Is it just a passive way of uh, being in God's presence? No, you could very actively, with your trust in the Lord, wait on the Lord. And we know that God is somebody who who comes through for us. And another beauty of the prayer of waiting is that who He is is being imparted to us. this very passage isaiah 40 you know it says that they that wait upon the lord shall mount up with wings as eagles okay and how is that possible in the earlier verses there you see that you know god increases the strength right for those who are weak 
and those who do not they lack might uh, god increases might god increases strength so god will impart uh, his abilities his grace to us as we wait on him and this is a beautiful uh, kind of prayer that you and i can engage in just waiting upon the lord and in his presence okay the next uh, category of prayer we have here in our notes is called the prayer of watching okay so what is the prayer of watching the very term watching is associated with alertness so when somebody is watching over a house you have a watchman what is the watchman doing the watchman will prevent the wrong people from entering okay and only allow the right people to come in in the same way we can guard ourselves our families our ministry you know whatever god has entrusted to us through prayer so prayers of watching are prayers of protection okay uh, and <coughs> the term watching reminds us uh, that you know we have positioned ourselves in a way that we are guarding okay uh, now Isaiah 62 is a good example there is a passage there that talks about uh, watching uh, could somebody please read this this is uh, verses 6 and 7 Isaiah 62 verses 6 and 7 Isaiah 62 6 and 7 I have yes. set watchmen on your walls o Jerusalem they shall never hold their peace day or night you you who make mention of the lord do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes and till he makes jerusalem a praise in the earth okay Amen. great yes thank you thank you roslyn so you notice here uh, god is saying that he set watchmen on the walls for jerusalem so there were people who were appointed to pray okay and you realize in in that same passage that these people were crying upon the lord they were calling on the lord and uh, you know not giving god any rest so that is what what is that not giving god any rest calling upon the lord it is prayer so there are people who were praying for jerusalem and what are they called they called as watchmen so we are able to guard protect watch over what god has entrusted to us in this case a city so we could also be watching for our city for our nation through our prayers okay uh, and uh, god can extend his protection to us uh, now we see different aspects of this again we will touch on it in a deep way later on you know prayers of protection uh, for now maybe i'll give you an example of the way jesus uh, you told um, uh, peter right like satan has uh, sought to sift you as wheat but i have prayed for you so the prayer actually protected okay and it guarded uh, peter so in this manner we can engage in uh, prayer of uh, watchfulness and that uh, is also another kind of prayer that we can incorporate so you know we've covered different kinds of prayer so far uh, if you have any any comments or questions okay divya has a question here does watch tower also refer to the same yes uh, divya so a watch tower <coughs> in those days uh they would have uh, these fortresses okay and uh, compared to a watch tower where the watchmen would uh position themselves they could see to a large distance from the height okay so when they could see to a to a large distance if there was an intruder right if there there was a, an enemy army that is trying to take over uh, the city they would be able to observe that or if one of their own spies was running up to deliver a message they could quickly note that so watch tower watchmen you know all this has to do with the protection of uh, the city so yes you can associate watch tower with um, you know this watching as well okay thank you thank you pastor yeah sure 
right thank you uh, divya any other any other thoughts uh, about the kinds of prayers so far all right great yeah yeah divya. i just want <laughs> yeah i just wanted to say that really loved the when you shared about the prayer of consecration okay praise god yeah yeah it was a new you know um, mm. revelation yeah thank you wow praise god yeah thank you divya and uh, did you notice today pastor jake also um, like pastor kumar prayed uh, for consecration and he said consecrate yourselves so i felt mm. like god was ministering along yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know those lines as well so yeah praise god mm. all right fine so uh, we will move on to the next chapter here uh, we are going to page 22 now and we will talk about uh, how to pray a believing prayer this is by far the most common prayer that we all engage in because it comes under the category of asking and receiving so uh when we want to receive it uh it needs to be a prayer of faith okay uh and so we will we will talk about how to pray this believing prayer okay uh we engage this mostly when it comes to our personal needs but we could also engage this when we are asking god for uh, certain things for our ministry right uh, certain uh, decisions that we have to make uh, or if you're not in the ministry as such maybe your your work life uh, or you know other aspects that concern your life so asking and receiving but asking in faith or making a believing prayer so what are some things that help us okay what what do we see in scripture the first thing that we need to pray a believing prayer is a clear conscience okay why should we have a clear conscience when we approach god any thoughts on that can i can i contribute yes please yes can isaac you need to clear our conscience so that we can exactly ask god for what you desire or what you mm. want god to feel so mm. that's why i we should have a clear our conscience so we want to pray to believe in prayer thank you mm. okay thank you so to be able to ask exactly what you want okay all right thank you isaac uh divya yes divya yeah I, i was just uh, uh thinking like god completely knows what you are and what you have done so you cannot hide anything uh from god so yeah to have a clear conscience means i'm being truthful right i'm being transparent to god mm -hmm. yes yes so we are uh, we are being truthful and honest before god all of what you shared is uh, uh, important and that is uh, those do make up the reasons uh, as to why we must have a clear conscience now in addition to that in scripture uh, we see like psalm 66 and verse 18 it says that you know if i if i uh, have sin or or iniquity in my heart then god will not hear my prayer right so when i come with the wrong conscience it's not aligned to the will of god okay and thereby how can i be asking in his will i'm hiding sin in my heart and scriptures tell us that god will not hear when we have a heart with sin in it uh, and similarly you know 1 john chapter 3 there are some uh, references in your notes that i'm referring to we will read a few but uh, otherwise i will just tell you what the essence of that scripture is so 1 john 3 verses 21 through 22 it says that you know uh, we are able to pray when our when our uh, heart does not condemn us 
okay so when does our heart condemn us when when there is guilt okay when there is a sin that we have not taken care of and when we pray with our heart condemning us then those prayers are not heard okay how about we read this passage 1 john chapter 3 verses 21 through 22 could somebody read it please beloved if our heart does not condemn us we have confidence toward god and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight mm. yes yes so you see here the uh, importance of having a heart that is clear okay nothing within us condemns us uh, and when you come before god in that way our prayers are heard okay that's what this passage says so to carry a clear conscience is very very important now uh, another passage which is referenced here in our notes is from 1 peter 3 verses 7 and 12 and it's in the context of marriage where you know peter writes to the husbands and says like you know you must respect your wife uh, because if if that doesn't happen like you uh, come before god without a clear conscience without treating uh, the wife right uh, then again there is a hindrance to the the answered prayer right so having and maintaining a clear conscience is like a prerequisite for a successful prayer life so if there is anything any sin um any uh, you know uh, like i i generally say like go by the conviction of the holy spirit in our hearts as we read the word as we are spending time with god worshiping you know the holy spirit has a way of ministering to us right and just nudging us and saying hey this thing in your life i think you should surrender it so deal with it quickly like keep short accounts with god and deal with it so when we do that what happens we can maintain a clear conscience and when you have a clear conscience it's uh, a lot easier for us to walk in answered prayers okay so maintain a clear conscience that's the first one second is to pray in the name of jesus uh, john chapter 14 verses 13 through 14 can somebody please read that john 14 verses 13 and 14 John chapter 4 Whatever you ask in my name that will I do so Okay so, so that the father may be glorified in the son If you ask me anything in my name I will do it Okay right Yeah thank you John thank you and Jafina I noticed uh, you also wanted to read maybe you can read the next scripture Okay I hope that's okay Jafina Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, right. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, John. Uh, so uh, the scripture says, "Whatever you ask in my name, right, I will do it for you." Now, what what is the importance of praying in the name of Jesus? Any thoughts on that? Jesus' name is uh, name above all names. Like, okay. Uh, yeah god has positioned uh yeah jesus name above all mm -hmm. okay so uh the highest name okay and we also understand that the highest name means authority so the highest authority if you want something done uh you generally use a seal or a letter or you know, something from the person who has authorized you to do that for example you know a bank account if uh, i am not able to operate my bank account uh, i give a letter to one of you and say okay i am not well so uh, divya will will uh, do the transaction here is a letter so divya is going in my name and the bank will heed to that because here is a you know a, a letter uh, uh, authorizing her to uh, go ahead and 
do the transactions so in the same way here on the earth one of the ways in which we demonstrate our authority is by the use of the name of jesus because that name is backed by authority okay so jesus said you pray in my name so what are we doing you know we are using the power of attorney we are using the authority of the name of jesus when we pray uh, and this is how jesus taught us to pray he said you pray to the father in the name of jesus so that's a common way of of uh, uh, making our prayer so we usually pray to the father in the name of jesus right so you have the authority of the name of jesus in your prayer okay and uh, that is the second thing that we want to bring to our notice now for us to make a believing prayer and to receive an answer to that prayer it is also important for that prayer to be in the will of god okay let's read another passage so jeffina you can read this 1 john chapter 5 verses 14 and 15 First John chapter five, verses fourteen and fifteen, and we are yes. confident that He hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases Him. And since we know He hears us, when we make our request, we also know that He will give us what we ask for. Yeah. So you see, when we ask in line with what God has willed, He hears us. Okay, and. because he hears us we are assured we are confident that we are going to receive from him so praying in the will of god is very very important okay and here the term is the revealed will of god so the revealed will of god for us is the scriptures the word of god and the word of god has god's revelation on various things right about uh, what our uh, calling could be what uh god's purpose is for our lives the way of living right uh, 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 uh what do you call it like the the decisions that we have to make the way we must engage in relationships so many things that have to do with living life here on the earth so the will of god is already revealed so we can pray with the knowledge of god's will and that makes the prayer very effective because what did we read just now when we pray in the will of god we are sure that god hears us okay and that's a righteous prayer that is going before god so for example if i pray for somebody's healing i don't have to think twice whether it's it okay to pray for healing or not okay to pray for healing because at all times it's okay to pray for healing right god has already uh, spoken in his word and said i'm jehovah rafa the lord who heals you so god is always on the side of healing so i can pray it is in the will of god to pray for somebody's healing all right so in that manner i must identify the will of god now for example uh, uh, what if there is a matter uh, which is not as clear cut as uh, praying for healing or you know praying uh, for a life that glorifies god these are all broad things and we all know that we should align ourselves to uh, what scripture say but what about specifics of life right uh, like you you are going to make your next decision about a project uh, how do you know what is god's will any any comments or like let what career to take or what who to marry because the bible has instructions but how would you know that oh okay man i have this is the person or this is the course that i have to take specific maybe uh god gives us a confident at the time that this is you can go for it maybe he can speak through some verses but sometimes okay. we feel so confident on the decision that this is god's plan okay good good yes yeah so god uh, kind of gives you that direction and that confidence that this is the decision that you have to make anyone else how about the specifics how do you know what is god's will divya peace of god okay 
okay she adds also so the peace of god about a matter circumstances will also align godly counsel yes that's true okay uh, and i think we've done a, a sermon series on god's guidance so uh, apcwo.org/books uh, you will find an entire book that you can go read uh, on how to uh, identify god's guidance for various aspects of our life so the point that i'm making is identify god's will if you want to pray about something identify god's will first okay uh, and this could take a while you may want to um, read the bible uh, you know study the word of god to come up with okay fine this is god's will so i'm going to pray along these lines uh, or uh, something specific you know one of the things that the bible says is that the holy spirit reveals the will of god you know we uh, read that passage in first corinthians chapter 2 when we say no i has seen no ear has heard no mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for those who love him but you know as you go further down we read in scripture that but it is revealed to us by the holy spirit so even the things which are seem unrevealed they are revealed to us through the holy spirit so as we pray as we meditate in god's word as we wait upon uh, the holy spirit of god he can give us that revelation okay and we can understand so i'm reminded of uh, uh david yongi cho many of you would have heard about this uh, man of god he has written uh, a book called the fourth dimension uh, about you know prayers and specific prayers so he talks about being very specific in prayer and all that uh, but you know i want to take your attention to uh, the time when he prayed for his church growth and he shares that uh, example uh, and he talks about how the holy spirit used to put a number in his heart so at one point uh, when he had uh, i i may be like i haven't heard that uh, sermon for a while so i i may not be exact about the numbers here but something like there were three people in the congregation uh, and uh, you know yongicho pastor yongicho was praying and god told him pray for 300 people uh, and he said uh, god i have only three people like what are you saying how can i pray for 300 people so he 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 got that number and he prayed very specifically for okay i want 300 people here and eventually it happened right the church grew to 300 people and then god put another number in his heart and i think that was 3000 so then he started praying through that number see some specifics that uh, he got from god and he would pray through those specifics right uh, so we can wait on the lord we can study the word of god uh, that will show us what is the revealed will of god for a matter okay and when you are aware of that uh whether it is a general thing or you know for example forgiveness that is we know as you study god's word should i forgive this person or not god's word says forgive so we can do that but specifics exactly lord what do you want me to do where do you want me to go you know holy spirit is also able to reveal that to us when we pray we spend time with him uh, and once you receive that you can pray more specifically in line with that uh you know exact thing that god may want for us all right uh, and when you do that you're confident because you've received it from god and you are praying that through as well okay so that is the next uh, point there about praying a believing prayer all right so you you're all with me so far are you okay are you getting something out of this yes ma'am okay great 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 thank you thank you all right yes so let's continue uh the next important thing is to pray with strong desire okay so once we know that something is god's will for us uh and this is what god wants now i gave you the example of uh, uh pastor yongi cho when he prayed for his uh, church growth okay and he also talks about strong desire you know when you know that something is uh, god's will for you uh, and church growth of course you know we know that that is something god wants for every church for more people to be blessed and the people who are there to mature in the lord so he would pray with a strong desire 
and he encourages people also to do the same so strong desire would mean that you know you're pressing into god for that uh, and uh, you know they, he he talks about how uh, he would just walk around his uh, church and it was more like a tent at that time but he would just keep praying and and very strongly even pray prayers like god if you don't give me i i will die and all i don't recommend things like that but you know basically he shares his uh, point on strong desire to uh, to be keen on seeing that happen because otherwise what happens you know we go to god we pray we say okay god uh, you know you've called me to be a, a pastor uh, and i'm praying for my church to grow if it grows it's okay if it doesn't grow also it's okay you know god will be like what is this prayer you know that it is my will for the church to grow then you pray with strong desire right uh we cannot be like double minded this is okay that's also okay when we pray like that you know we don't receive answers to such kind of prayers so we must have a strong desire to receive an answer for that because we've already spent time with the lord spent time in his word and we have come to a place where we know okay this is what god wants for me and i must have it so pray with a strong desire okay so there are a couple of uh, uh, passages here that also talk about uh, you know having that strong faith so mark 11:24 uh, maybe one of us can read that please mark 11 24 for i say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them hmm very correct thank you um, thank you roslin for reading that so you see jesus said when you pray for something you pray believing you believe that you have received them then you will have them but double mindedness prevents us from receiving from god okay so we have to be firm and we must not have a casual approach for the outcome if we have a casual approach it means that you know we are not assured that this is god's will for us and we are okay to kind of let it go so that shouldn't be the case but you pray god's will and pray it with a strong desire you should have a strong desire and god you know i want to see this happen so once again you know i i'll just share from uh, yongi cho's example itself you know he talks about how uh, he had a strong desire and god had already uh, spoken to him that you know the church will grow and all that so he had a strong desire to see a large church and we know today that uh, his church is uh, is it the second largest church in the world i think so so uh, it's the second largest church in the world uh, at a time when he had you know some three people or so uh, apparently he would preach with the faith that one day there will be thousands of people in this church so he would preach as if he is preaching to 1000 people all right so <laughs> apparently the the few people in the church would uh, tell him like pastor please stop screaming we can hear you very well you know that you don't have to scream so much but in his head he used to think i am preaching to 1000 people so what if there are only 3 people in front of me but you know he had that strong desire god is going to do this i will pray for this i will work for this this is going to happen right so we need to have that kind of a strong desire it's not like yeah you know it's fine so when we come to god in that way even now we said when you pray you believe that you receive it then you will have it right so we must pray uh, and also get that assurance uh, when we pray in our spirit saying okay god you have done it for me i know and you know we will see those things happen because we are not praying out of our own minds and our own desires but we are praying in the will of god all right so the next point here is about praying with faith okay praying with faith uh 
uh, we've just read Mark eleven twenty four, and uh, there is a similar passage in Matthew twenty one verse twenty two. Again, one of us, please read it. Matthew twenty one verse twenty two. Matthew twenty one verse twenty two. You can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. Mm. See, what does it say? If you have faith, you will receive it. So we must pray with faith. Okay, what is faith? Faith is the inner assurance of the things which we have hoped for. So when we have faith, we know that it's coming. Okay. So I used to think this to myself when I was studying in college. Um, uh, so I was praying for a certain course after I graduated, uh, and uh, it took a long time before I got an opportunity to actually do that course. So that entire period during the waiting time was uh, very hard because you know it was not coming through. I was only praying. I was only praying, but I would tell myself, you know, it's like. Um, you know that God will do it for you, okay? And it's hard to explain to other people. Uh, whenever my friends would talk to me and they would say, hey, this is the common course, you take it, no problem. I'll be like, no, 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 but I want to do a course that has to do with, you know, this, this, and this. And they'll be like, you keep dreaming. It's never going to come to you. But I, I would want to tell them that, but I have faith. I know God will do it for me, but it's hard to explain, right? Because, uh, you know, faith is that inner assurance that we have on the basis of God's word for us. So I would tell myself, you know, it's like walking into a dark room, uh, but you can feel a table as you step into it, right? You can't see the table, but you can feel the table and you know there is a table. Now, people who are looking at the dark room from the outside and they'll be like, there's no table there. We can't see any table. But you're like, no, but there is a table here because you can feel it. You can touch it. It is there. So as you're journeying with God, you know, that is faith. God puts faith in your heart to do things which others may not even see, right? But with that faith, when you pray, you know, God gives you the assurance within you and you know it's going to happen. So, you know, long story short, in my case, I actually got the course which I desired. Right? Whatever I used to tell my friends is going to be a course that will deal with this and that. It was exactly that course. And I, I used to tell them it's going to be like this. I'm going to study in this, you know, a certain place. Everything actually happened. Right. But not out of my will or my desire or anything like that. But I'm just telling you how God can give us the faith. And obviously, in my case, it took a long time for me to pray, to prepare my heart and to have that sense of assurance within me that, OK, even if people say it's not going to happen, I know I've prayed for so long and God has given me that assurance it will happen. And it happened. Right. So, I, I, you know, we can have faith for things as we journey with God by uh, the power of his word, by the power of his spirit. And he can give us that, um, uh, you know, something to hold on to deep within us. And that is called faith. And when you pray with faith, you know that things are going to happen, right? You know, K-N-O-W, how to explain that? It's very difficult to explain to somebody else. But when you're praying, you pray knowing God is going to do it. I know. And it happens. OK, so have faith and uh, faith again, you know, uh, faith. It's not just like sitting and saying, yeah, I'm praying it will happen. Faith is active. Faith is not like resigning passively and saying, yeah, someday it's going to happen. But you're actively moving in the direction where God is leading you and you do whatever it takes to do it and about faith we can speak so much i'm sure you have a class on faith that pastor is teaching so uh, you know you can get your inputs <coughs> more inputs from there about uh, believing god praying a believing prayer declaring in faith you know so many things for you to uh, hold on to that faith and keep pressing forward in god's direction so when we pray in faith we know that we receive it okay Okay, so the next point here is to persevere with faith. All right, so I told you some prayers, we might see immediate results, but there are certain other prayers 
which might take a while now why do uh, the answers take a while maybe it's not god's timing yet uh, to to do something uh, or maybe our hearts are not yet aligned and prepared for us to step into those those things so there can be several several reasons why uh, it's taking a while but what should we do we continue to engage in prayer so what does this prayer look like will the prayer look more like or begging god every time god i want to do that course you have to give it to me you have to give it to me no it doesn't mean that we beg god when we are persevering in prayer initially when we are trying to identify god's will you know we might we might our prayers might not be clear we might be saying god okay help me uh, i like that course can you make a way can you open the door but you know as we are studying his will and yielding ourselves to the holy spirit god brings us to a place where we are clear okay it's right according to his word and the holy spirit is giving witness bearing witness with my spirit that he is going to do it okay and i'm going to get this course so once you have the faith and when you are clear you've prayed you know you ask believing that you have received it right after that what to do after that perseverance means thanksgiving to god perseverance means you know praising god and remaining uh, in at a place of rest confidently in god uh, saying god i thank you you have heard my prayer you are working on my behalf things are aligning according to your plan for my life you know so your praying prayers of declaration <coughs> excuse me praying prayers of thanksgiving right so perseverance does not mean your begging from the day you started praying about it till the day that you actually get it somewhere in between you are quite clear this is what god wants but you continue to pray right you are praying prayers of thanksgiving prayers of declaration uh, yeah, and also you know it could also mean spiritual warfare where you are praying and as you are praying uh, whatever hindrances are there against uh, that thing from actually working out or coming through in your life you know those things are being removed so that would be your persevering in prayer as you wait on the lord for the answers to come and you know you continue in thanksgiving and the a wonderful example of thanksgiving is the life of abraham when god promised abraham that he would have a son so you have the passage in romans chapter 4 where it talks about the the stages or in a in a sense the steps of faith where uh, he trusts god he believes god and once god gives him the assurance he continues with thanksgiving so we to continue with thanksgiving and saying god we know you know you have done it for us we are going to walk in victory and we want to give you thanks so you continue in thanksgiving so these are some keys for us to help us walk in believing prayer believing prayer which yields answers uh, uh, through which you can receive from god you know whatever you are waiting on him for so i think uh, today uh, we have touched on the content which is there in our notes i think some more points that are mentioned here i i will touch on it quickly and then uh, if you have any questions we will take that up so uh, down below in that chapter page 23 uh, <coughs> there is a question which says if i have prayed and asked once for something is it correct if i keep on asking god for the same thing over and over again so i think i've already answered that question there's no need to keep on asking god over and over again you go through these stages right and at some point uh, when you've prayed in faith knowing that it is the will of god you transition into more of a thanksgiving kind of a prayer the next question does god always give whatever we ask okay uh, so for this we go back to the will of god which is in the word of god so we must understand the word of god if we are asking aligned to the word of god yes we can expect answers for whatever we are asking but if we are asking amiss or you know we are not aligned 
to god's word uh, and if we are kind of trespassing on some of his laws then it won't happen for example if i pray today i go on to my terrace you know the rooftop i go there and i tell god god i believe you are a protector okay and i'm going to jump today from my terrace i'm using all the principles right by faith in the name of jesus thanksgiving everything i'm praying and i'm saying lord nothing will happen to me i know but i'm going against the law natural law of gravity which god has already put in place and there's no reason why he should change it for me in that moment okay so there are certain boundaries there are certain laws like we will talk about it later when when we study just i'm just giving you one example see miracles happen okay and based on the purpose of god certain miracles happen but every time to expect god to change the normal uh, boundary or the law you know that that wouldn't be right because he has put certain things in place for example one day you know joshua and all you know when the battle was going on the sun stood still it says and they were able to engage in battle but does it happen every day no it doesn't now if i ask that and say god today i haven't submitted my assignment the sun has to stand still i don't think that prayer will get answered right because we are asking it to bend the rules and bend the laws and the boundaries of god so if we ask uh, you know in that manner those prayers will not be answered so whatever we ask doesn't get answered if it is aligned to the word of god the will of god yes you can expect answers to that prayer what if i do not know god's will about a matter simple find out study understand okay ephesians 5 tells us that that we must understand the will of god first you understand the will of god know the will of god so it's okay to take time to understand the will of god right and even if we are going through a phase in our lives where we feel hey i still can't understand you can pray a prayer of consecration the way jesus prayed and say god i want this but not my will but yours be done so that's a prayer of surrender a prayer of yielding a prayer of consecration okay so ultimately after doing all your study and seeking after god you still don't understand what god wants you to do then you just yield and you pray a prayer of consecration to god okay so these points <coughs> were there in our notes we have covered them uh, now coming to uh, the comments here okay yeah uh, thanks divya that analogy helped me for so many years i used to think to myself no there's a table i know there's a table <laughs> right and god uh, actually came through that's uh, that's very uh, tangible <laughs> yeah sure yes yes thank you okay uh, rubika okay you've read the book of uh, paul yongicho uh, key of faith okay sure that's that's a good book and jafina oh okay thank you jafina thank you for your encouragement so any questions about praying a believing prayer All right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I have a question. Yes, Rebecca. Uh, that in a scripture, Paul said, "I pray in spirit and wisdom." What did it hmm. mean? Hmm. 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 Okay. He says in spirit and wisdom. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm. Would you know the exact verse, Rebecca? No, ma'am. I'm not remember, but just uh, I've not rem remember where that is written. 
Mm. Because I can recall, I think First Corinthians fourteen, where uh, Paul says, "You know, I pray in the spirit, and I also pray with my understanding." I think verses fourteen and fifteen. I, uh, you know, so I can only think of that. So basically, it's very simple. He's saying that he prays in the normal languages, and he also prays in tongues. That's what it means. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Mm. Sure, thank you. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Nicholson, you have you have something to say? Hey, uh, my hand is raised. Ah, huh. yeah. Hello. Yes, yes, uh, Nicholson, please go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I just wanted to say that uh, you answered a lot of my questions. Actually, oh, okay, faith, I had, glad. In the faith class, I had asked a question about uh, going and just praying. If you if you feel like praying to random people also, mm -hmm. and I think you answered a lot of those questions. Oh, so thank you. For okay, that. praise God. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm I'm so happy to uh, hear that because today, uh, I mean, we usually pray for our students, but I was praying and I was saying, Lord, you know, the students have to be ministered to because it's not mm -hmm. just about covering the portions, right? But I very specifically yeah. prayed that, so I'm encouraged to hear. Uh, what you you just said. Yeah, Thanks God. for that. Thank you. Yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Divya, Avdesh. Okay. Uh, thank you, brother. Brother Avdesh is he says he's blessed and Divya really powerful. Uh, sometimes I even forget I prayed about something, but when God answers it later on, I'm amazed. Just sharing. Sometimes it is wonderful to think of God's way of answering prayers. Yeah. So true. So true. Yes, yes, um, yes. So we have one uh, comment here. We'll take that up. I know we've uh, overshot time, uh, and with this explaining this last uh, verse, we can wrap up. So Jude one twenty, I think it says, "Strengthen yourself in your inner man, praying in the uh, Holy Spirit." That's what it says, right? Jude yes, verse twenty. Okay, yes, so building, uh, up building yourself up in the most holy faith. faith. Yeah, so what praying faith in the spirit. Does it talk about? Okay, most holy faith means what faith? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it is uh, uh, referring to any category of, of things. Uh, you know, faith for this or faith for that. But basically, it says you are building yourself up. In your spirit, man, by praying in tongues. Jude twenty is also a scripture that talks about praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so what happens? We pray in the Holy Spirit. Faith comes through the Word of God. That's there, but we develop a spiritual strength when we pray in the Holy Spirit. So both of these things. Meditating on the word and praying in the Holy Spirit will contribute to a great faith life, if I can put it that way. So, if you want to be a person of faith, word, spirit, right? The work of the word, work of the spirit. Then you're walking in faith, right? And so many prayers that you pray, you'll see that those prayers are being answered. So that's what I would say for uh, Jude twenty. Does it make sense, Rosalind? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, great, great, wonderful. Yes, yes. So, thank you, everyone. It was good to uh, uh, study this topic. We will pick up from the next topic uh, in the next class. And also, just to let you all know, uh, in September, uh, maybe early September, I will post your first assignment. Okay, so be mentally prepared for that. We will cover as much portions as possible until then, and then you know you you will also need to work on your first assignment. Just a heads up there. All right, so uh, thank you once again. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and we'll meet again next week. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Divya. Blessed to have all of you and the interactions here as well. Thank you, class. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, brother Avdesh. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye.